Rock's Classic Rock, Q1043. And we are thrilled to welcome Jeremy Piven to the studio this morning. Yeah. It, it's an honor to be here. I know you guys are new to the game, the radio <laughs> game. <laughs> I mean, I've never seen anything like it. This guy's got it down to a science. You walk in, you sit down, and bam, you're on the air. That was genius. That's our Jim Kerr. Well, yeah. well, well, well Jeremy, yeah. I, you know, you were born in New York City, so that yes. gives us the right to claim you as one of our oh, own. Oh, man, I wish. You know, but you grew up in Evanston, Illinois. In, indeed, I did. Uh, I grew up, the end of my street was technically Chicago. So people, you know. So, they, right, so that means at the end of your street, that's where all the liquor stores and bars were. Correct, because we were dry. Yeah, wow. Evanston was a dry town. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we were a very integrated school. I was very lucky where I grew up. One of the few, like, truly integrated places in in America, unfortunately. Um, and so I claim Chicago, and they go, yeah, bro, it's Evanston. And I'm thinking I'm, I was 40 yards from from <laughs> Chicago. But okay, I took public transportation to work. I was the only white boy on my football team. Uh, my jersey number said linebacker, and my body said kicker. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Thank you for coming. <laughs> but, 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 you know, it's, it's so funny because Evanston's a gigantic college town because Northwestern yeah. University is there. Absolutely. And it was dry. And by yeah. that, by that, I mean, no bars, no, yeah. no liquor sales. Sounds like a of fun any college. Kind. Yeah. And you're a little young, Jeremy. I've never but, been too young for any story. But yeah. But Chicago, uh, when I lived there, it had a very weird tiered drinking age system. So at 19, you could drink beer and wine, and then 21 for everything else. That's wild. Okay. So those okay. Evanston. Yeah, uh, residents who went to Northwestern University or who just grew up there, it would be like an invasion across the street to those bars and liquor stores. Yes, I mean with yeah. with with kids, you know, walking back across the street with cases of beer or wine. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, um, I didn't know any different. I my parents have a theater blocks from Northwestern called the Piven Theater, and I grew up on the stage, uh, thinking that every kid grew up on the stage and butchered Chekhov and all the classics, <laughs> you know? Um, and so, yeah, I didn't know that we were dry. I didn't know any different. And um, I ended up going to NYU and continuing on. Well, you grew up in a theatrical family. Yeah. You know, it's almost like those old movies that you can watch on TCM yeah. where, you know, the, the Foy family are on Broadway and, you know, everybody's all participating your your parents as you mentioned uh a, a drama school an acting school the piven theater um i you know to this day i do lines with my mom i mean i run lines with my mom don't do lines <laughs> no, kids, Aww, no the, don't kids, do lines please, for the love of god it's the piven, if you remember it's the one piven thing theater workshop it's the piven theater workshop we we workshopped <laughs> all of our uh, creative endeavors no imagine you know i did entourage for a decade and, you know, everything I said is already gold. I said to Joyce Piven's face because she would sit there and run lines with me mm -hmm. and we would do it like a play until when I hit the set, I was ready to go and I felt comfortable and she was never offended. She's a pro. She knows it's a work of fiction. Unlike say. most people who come up to me on the street and say, <laughs> bro, I'm a douchebag because of you, bro. <laughs> well, run lines means yeah. when someone is rehearsing who has a part in a production, mm. a friend or a colleague reads the lines to them that would be part of... I don't the know. dialogue. Yeah. Reading those lines on. to my mom, though, I don't think I could do that. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because people would say that. They'd go, how can you say that in front of your mom? Because my character just said some of the most abrasive, obscene things. And the reality is she's an artist, and she knows that this is a work of fiction, and she's you know seen and done it all, mm -hmm. um, and so she has no judgment. And I, I grew up that way, so it was it was second nature to me. I didn't think, okay, this is my mom watching me as I'm screaming at Lloyd, just absolute <laughs> obscenities. You, you talk about your your mother and, and, and how talented she is, and, and but she's an educator. Yeah. And, you know, educators, well, part of their function in life is to be a little critical yes. in order to make you better. Absolutely. So, you know, you didn't just leave class and then go home and relax. You would leave class and go home and the teacher would still be there. Yeah, it's funny my mother and my father were very different educators. My father was was very tough um with no filter 
and my mother was very kind and would give you a note. You didn't know you were getting a note. You know what I mean? She would celebrate you. Wow, great job. And then you would, oh, thank you. And then you're, you're, you know, riding high. And then she would slip a note. You wouldn't know it. My father would say, there's one actor in this room and you ain't it. So <laughs> let's go again. And, you know, he was right. He was always right. And, and I, th- let's say I, he said that to me once when I hadn't progressed in rehearsal. And so, you know, that tough love makes you grow. And I think now, unfortunately, people, a lot of people, you know, we're dealing in a climate right now where, you know, um, tough love isn't necessarily tolerated. And so it's curious to see what happens next because, you know, my parents, my father was very tough on me and I worked my butt off and I'm lucky enough to be, you know, a working actor and comic. And if people are always worried about your feelings and not really helping you, mm-hmm. then, you know, how is that going to shake out? We don't know. That gentle parenting now. Well, well yeah, but, <laughs> you know, when you're talking about going through an actor's education, uh, what Jeremy said is correct. There's, there's a lot of criticism that comes your way, and sometimes it can be pretty tough to deal with, but it's important as you're developing your, your skills. What he mentioned before when he said getting a note uh, in 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 that particular world, that means a critique. You're getting a critique of of your work. One has to be available for critique, and not um, you know be stuck in and a slave to your ego and reactive. You know what I mean? I'll take a note from anywhere. You know it it doesn't. And by the way, it doesn't. You know, they, people say, like, you know, if someone says something and, and you, you know, gives you a note or whatever, and, and they're not in a better position, don't listen to them. That's not true. You can get a note from anyone that could be valuable. You never know. So if you kind of put your ego aside and, and just take it all in, you know, like with stand-up, someone may throw something out there to me and I can use it, you know. So I'm a student. Always be a student. And, and you have coming up a project that you're working on or worked on with your sister. Yeah. Uh, speaking of New York, I, my mother uh, read this short story in The New Yorker uh, by Arthur Miller called The Performance, and she gave it to me, and she goes, uh, I, this is your role. And I was like, whoa, my mom, she's not a frivolous person. Mm. It was heavy. I read it, and I was like, oh, my God, this is so heavy. Jewish tap dancer in 1937, he's not making it. The only way that he can progress in his career is to hide his identity and dance for Hitler in Germany. And, oh, my God. So I'm so delusional. I didn't think, well, I don't tap dance. I just went, no, I'm going to play this. Mm -hmm. And so I started gathering the money, and it it, it happened overnight. It happened, uh, it only took me 14 years to make it. (laughs) 14 years. Um, Thank, you know, uh, thank God. uh, Well, the screenplay for the performance was written by your sister, and she directed you. Yes, she adapted. My sister adapted the... uh, She came to me and said, you know, can I give it a shot? Of course. Uh, She's brilliant. We grew up in in the work with my family, and we're on shorthand, and she she wrote this incredible script with Josh Salzberg. Uh, And it's... It's the it's the best thing I've ever done in my life, and I and I know that sounds very dramatic, but um, it's the best work I've ever done. And you know, it's not it's very uncouth to talk about reactions, but people, you know, Feinberg's forecast put me in on you know as part of the Oscar buzz, mm-hmm. which is very very rare, especially for an indie film. Right, it's a little yeah. indie film, and the rest of the movies are big studio films. And your sister's name is. Shira Piven. And, uh, so how can we see this movie? It's going to be in theaters. When? December 27th. I'm going to come back here yes. with my tap shoes, and we're going to talk about the performance, and you guys are going to come see it, whether you like it or not. Um, and we're doing I, I'll tell you guys, um, th- uh, you know, uh, th- there's also a little screening uh, that we're doing um, at the Soho House. But those are, unfortunately, the screening rooms are so small. So we're, we're you know, it's like... You know we're we're up against it, and we just you. I, I want to be you know someone that people look to and go, wow, okay, that guy never gave up. Because p- people said to me, wow, well, 14 years, how did you never give up? And I I don't even think of that as an option. You know, I started every year. I would hear no that I couldn't find the money. I kept tapping. Yeah. And there's this guy named Jared Grimes, who's a, a brilliant choreographer, actor, tapper, and he's here on Broadway now. And he was my teacher, and choreogra- he choreographed the film, and he's in the film. And uh, yeah, I just we just kept working, and so I for about a decade I got good enough to play this 
professional with tap dancer. Your, with all your other success and everything that you were doing and busy, this was yeah. still what you were still tapping. Well, I I you. knew that this was the uh, this is a story that needed to be told. You know, we're, we're especially now. Mm. There's a lot of confusion about history and and whatnot, and and this is a, a really good way of just opening up these conversations uh, about you know uh, our past and what's going on, and it's just a beautiful story. And it's also by far the best role of my life. Wow. So, you know, for many different reasons, I couldn't give it up. So that'll be the performance that will be in theaters on December 27th. We're, yeah. We're with Jeremy Piven, and we'll be right back. Jeremy Piven is with us this morning here at Q104.3. And often when I mention to friends of mine that we have a guest scheduled to come up on the show, I'm asked questions about the person, like, what have they done? Do I know them? Have I heard of them before? Because we kind of live in an era of niche fame. Yeah. Uh, especially since uh, since the onset of the streaming era. Yes. Uh, but I must say, Jeremy, that whenever I mentioned you, 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 you're not stuck in any little niche because everybody that I mentioned your name to knew who you were. But what I found interesting is they all mention different facets of what you do. Oh, wow. I would say Jeremy Piven is coming on in that. Entourage! Yeah. Last night, uh, yesterday evening, in a restaurant in my neighborhood, I mentioned Jeremy Piven is coming on tomorrow. Oh, Selfridge. Loved him in Selfridge. Wow. You know? And then, of course, there's <laughs> who sells better clothes than Jeremy Piven in Rush Hour 2. I mean, it's it's like every <laughs> everybody I mentioned your name yeah. to mentions something else that you did. Well, I love that. I love that 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 I reach people and 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 those are all so different. You know, uh, Mr. Selfridge was something I did over in London, and they put it on PBS, and it's a very niche crowd. Um, Rush Hour Two um, was one day's work. You know. Uh, for a couple hundred bucks, uh, and Chris Tucker <laughs> and Jackie Chan each got twenty million. Do I sound bitter? I am a little bitter. That was a great. That was a great performance. To totally improvised in a time of my life, and and that's before Entourage. I did forty movies just like that. That was the last kind of bit of that that I did before Entourage, where they would call me and it'd be a day's work, and they go just you know just just run it just give us you know some comedy here and i was always honored to do it um and jeremy yeah. is is there any chance that we will see a return of entourage that's a great question i i have no idea you know i i think because everywhere i go they ask that question so that <laughs> people miss it you know um i i get to travel the country doing stand-up and they're always still yelling you know let's hug it out and <laughs> screaming lloyd and so i do think that people miss it and and that's an honor that they remember this show and you know i got young guys coming up to me that watched eight seasons over the pandemic so we have a new generation right so i think you know it's interesting because i think you know the hbo's and the streamers they don't you know they don't necessarily know because I'm I'm out there in the country, so you know I I understand what people really want, and I don't think they get it, um, and it's hard to find you know pieces of material that are really reaching people, uh, and they've tried to reboot reboot some stuff, um, and I think this is one where our audience hasn't gone anywhere and it's actually grown. But you're on board for it. Absolutely, let's go. Okay, and you're going to be uh, on stage in West Nyack, uh, and. We're, we're talking about tomorrow uh, and Saturday uh, at, yeah. at Levity Live. So you're going out on the stage. Mm. An accomplished, successful, experienced actor who inhabits characters written by other people, but you're going out on the stage just as you, yeah. the way you are. I love it. it. It's It's actually, I feel like everything I've done in my life has prepared me for this. I grew up, you know, studying at the Piven Theater where we would do really cool, great works of our of, of, of literature. And then we would do improvised scenes and we would do like sketch comedy. I ended up at Second City and all, the, you know, it's basically right. the stuff you see on SNL. Um, so I've been doing one form of performing comedy improv I, i've done all the different lanes except stand-up so all roads lead to stand-up so when you're up there yes in the beginning it was absolutely terrifying i'll never forget the first time i got up at the laugh factory and the stage was tiny and i couldn't breathe 
because I'm so used to moving around and being able to connect with the audience. And so, you know, I, I had such respect for it. And so, you know, you have to bomb and you have to, you know, be people's biggest fear, if you ask anyone, is public humiliation. So you have to be okay, like it not going well. Mm. But if you work through it and you dig your way out and you find a way to get them back, then you're going to be fine. It's just that kind of live performance is so different, and we've discussed this before with some people who are incredibly good at it, uh, because yeah. you are there alone. You know, there yeah. is the drummer isn't beside you, the bass player isn't standing to your left or right. No, uh, there's no other actor to play <laughs> off of. It's just you all alone, and the, the audience. Yeah, yeah, and that's what's so beautiful and fun about it because you are having a dialogue with them, um, and. So, yeah, at any point they, they can yell stuff out. I was up on stage last night. You know, some people yell some stuff out, and then you get an opportunity to really dance with that, and that's really fun. So, um, yeah, you know in real time how you're doing. You know, there's no tape delay, uh -huh. and there's something really thrilling about that. And someone said to me, watch, you're going to be a better actor because of this. And I thought, how is that possible? And I went back and did the performance that we talked about, mm -hmm. this film, and, you know, because I'm up on stage every night performing and doing stand-up, as an actor, you know, it's it's rare when you you continuously find work. So it's almost like I have no rust on me because I've been getting up performing, doing my act. So when I went back to acting, it was like, you know, it, I was using different parts of my brain. So for whatever reason, this guy was right. It does, you know, one kind of, one lane informs the other. So you actually do get better at it. Jeremy Piven in West Nyack tomorrow and Saturday. I will be a lot funnier than this interview. Levity Live. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you, can, you can go to levitylive.com slash Nyack. Yeah. Now there are two shows Friday night, 7.30 and 9.45. Mm. And uh, Saturday, 7 p.m. and 9.30 p.m. Yeah. Uh, still... I do characters that have deeper voices than you. Really? Yeah, Stallone. How is that? Okay. Yeah. You got to do Stallone now. Well, I do Stallone because w when when drug companies are you talk about the side effects, mm -hmm. I said, why not use Stallone? Side effects include <laughs> dizziness, <laughs> barking, <laughs> anal bleeding. So, well, you can't understand him. So he can tell you all the different side effects. Never Polio. Lots of room. Sorry, sir. We can't understand you. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> okay. I had to get one impression in. All no, right. <laughs> Levity Live tomorrow and Saturday in West Nyack, New York. And don't forget the performance out in theaters on December 27th. Thank you, Jeremy Piven. Thank you guys so much. New York's classic rock. Q1043.